from Cleveland to Conneaut, Norwalk to Newton Falls, NOPAC is working to keep your natural gas and electric rates consistently affordable. We are 240 Ohio communities using our collective strength to buy in bulk, and then we pass the benefits along to you. From Avon to Alliance, Springfield to Sebring, it's a partnership that's been working for more than 20 years. We're working to help you keep more of the money you earn, from buying energy in bulk to sharing energy saving tips that help you reduce your energy usage. And we're working with our member communities, too, on important projects that save energy and improve lives. From Tiffin to Trumbull, Ashtabula to Athens, NOPAC is committed to helping you reduce your energy costs. For two decades, we've kept utility rates affordable for hundreds of thousands of residents. Just imagine what we can do together in the decades ahead. Learn more at nopec.org. It's Monday. It's September 11th. And the word of the day is unfortunate. Used in a sentence, September 11th is one of the most common birthdays in the country, and that's unfortunate for all those people. Ooh. And um, happy birthday, by the way. Hey, but at least your friends and family will don't never forget. Okay. Say, I, I don't want to say that joke crashed and burned, but not because that joke didn't crash and burn. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright, and broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, the Republican primary choice is none of the above. We'll make it through a story about the moon's South Pole with no ass jokes. And Mitch McConnell runs out of dial-up hours again. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Somebody jam a CD in there. <laughs> Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, we're all back home after the pajama party in lovely Newark, New Jersey. Any favorite moments other than the ones we talked about at the end of the live stream? Uh, can, can I go with your idiot buddy from high school trying to impress our lovely skeptical friend with his conspiracy theory bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> about, about Whole Foods trying to steal our soul? He's like, have I told you how much of a Ponzi scheme the Fed is? And she's like, oh God, can you just sing I Want to Push You Around instead? <laughs> I mean, I shared a video of it as our transitional screen during the live stream, but I, I have to go with Heath confronting our friend Ann Perkins about her cereal choices in Hive Mind. It was um, high drama. Plain Cheerios cannot be your favorite cereal. Rice That's impossible. Rice Ugh. Krispies. Ugh. Honey Nut. Absolutely must minimum. be at least minimum. Honey Multi -grain Nut. Minimum. Apple frosted. Cinnamon. I'd go with Frost Apple Cinnamon. Frosted, sure. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Plain cannot be the answer. <laughs> Grape Nuts cannot be your favorite cereal. Big unfrosted mini wheat cannot be. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Intervention. So weird. Muesli. Okay. In our lead story tonight, <laughs> the Republican Party tried to sneak in a bunch of their stupid failures right when we were traveling recently, just hoping we might let them go. But that is not happening. The biggest example was the very first debate of the presidential primary season for the GOP <laughs> featuring all their candidates except the obvious front runner, Donald Trump. So they had a big televised argument to figure out like their best loser, I guess. And that person might be able to run for VP and, you know, probably lose in the general. I have no idea what Republican voters are even rooting for at this point. It's really sad for them, probably. The, if the fucking return of John F. Kennedy Jr., if I recall correctly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, but I mean, he needs this party like he needs a hole in the head. Am I right? That's okay. the other. <laughs> I know it was his dad, but he probably there was probably yeah. a hole in his yeah. head when the ski hey, accident Eli, happened. Hey, Eli, that joke was... crashed and burned, too. <laughs> solid, solid. <laughs> It's probably some kind of skull fracture. I was like, I'm going to go look up the death report of John F. Kennedy Jr. Because hyper technically. And Kennedy's politics, they're going back into the right at this point. Thank so, you. The, uh, the evening for the debate started two minutes early, actually, when the Republican National Committee, I, I guess, started shaking with patriotism. They jumped the gun with the national anthem and just fired it right up. 
Then we got a first person shot from a drone camera as it flew up the stairs of the arena in Milwaukee what was and did that? a flyby of the stage like it was an NFL game. And the idiots on stage waved at the drone like they saw a flying puppy and they were what like, Wee, it? what is that? Ah! <laughs> Why, why is it that the pageantry of all these primary debates feels like the guy running the annual pickle fest tried to get creative? These are put on by major networks, are they not? Yeah, I mean, well, how major a network can you be when you're weeks away from owing Dominion voting 560 bajillion dollars, Noah? <laughs> <laughs> so... From there, we got a truck commercial, except the truck was just the state of Wisconsin in general. Seriously, some guy doing the truck commercial voice was like, beer, cheese, and razor thin elections. We are the purple state of Wisconsin. Like, weirdly proud about it, too. They're proud that they're not able to decide between Democrats and fucking neo-Nazis. But, you know, cheese, too, mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then we got to meet the candidates which included Ron DeSantis having a pretty serious injury to his face when he tried to smile <laughs> and missed hard. <laughs> like swing yes. and a miss on trying cool. to do a smile. Apparently, somebody told him to finish every one of his moments with, you know, end of sentence, two, three, four, smile like a regular human with a person mouth. And he did his best. <laughs> But his best was pretty rough. Not good. Oh, Heath included a couple of gifts in our notes, and it looks like the lips are being dragged into place with little invisible hooks yeah. or something. Yeah. He smiles like he's just been told, but I assure you she didn't suffer. Yes. It's like somebody oh. stop motioned a corpse in these yes. things. It's yes. really scary. I'm deleting. I put animated. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it's, no, it's really <laughs> creepy as terrible. fuck. I'm his getting eyes rid of them follow in the notes. I'm really I sorry go. about that. Yeah. I'm really just apologies all around. Okay. <laughs> Next up, we got another musical number. We're like three minutes in here. The first question of the debate was an audio daily double, I guess. <laughs> Instead of just asking a question about economic policy, Fox News decided to play a clip of rich men north of Richmond. And then finally they get to an actual question. The answers don't matter because they're fucking stupid. What does matter is... The guy who wrote that song, Oliver Anthony Music, immediately released a statement explaining that everyone on the GOP debate stage, those are exactly the people who he's complaining about in that song. The lyrics are all about the struggle of the working class, and the running theme of the Republican Party's economic policy is make the wealth gap wider. And it's been that way for decades. That's what they do. But side note, Oliver Anthony Music is an idiot who doesn't understand anything I just said and claims to be, quote, politically dead center. And if you're at the dead center of American politics, you're horrible, like mm -hmm. truly horrible. Also, the song is bad. He's bad at his fake fucking last name. Music, get out of here. Your last yeah. name's not music. When you can credit at least some of your success to the foibles of early SEO, you're probably not the <laughs> talent powerhouse you think you are. His, his name's Aaron with four A's. Oliver Anthony music. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Asshole. So from there, we got two hours of Fox News trying to help the stage of horrible people parse out the subtle differences between all the distinct brands of evil that they each are. It was like trying to rank the best drum circle of white guys with dreadlocks. Like, all the same, all terrible, slightly different bad smell. Now, in fairness, it wasn't entirely white guys. They also had two people of color on stage in Vivek Ramaswamy and Tim Scott and one woman in Nikki Haley. But... Now I'm taking back the fairness because most of the debate was old white guys attacking Ramaswamy and ignoring Tim Scott and talking over Nikki Haley. The only redeeming quality of the entire evening, and this is rough, it was Chris Christie. Yeah. Oh, to be clear, he's also terrible. Jersey but to boy. His credit, <laughs> to his credit, yeah, from Eli Bosnick's New Jersey. <laughs> to Christie's credit, he spent the entire night going after Trump. Pretty much that's all he was doing there. And he attacked a bunch of the stupid talking points that make the GOP look even worse than they are, which is hard to do. In my favorite example of that, Ramaswamy called climate change a hoax and Christie responded, quote, this guy sounds like chat GPT standing up here. 
And okay, like good zinger, I guess, because, you know, climate change is not a hoax. But Chris Christie's line and Ramaswamy's stupid claim perfectly encapsulate the GOP because they're both wrong. Yeah, yeah what exactly. they said. Right. No, so my favorite aspect of this debate was the analysis afterwards about why they spent so much time attacking Ramaswamy when you know, it's, it's not actually strategically advantageous to any of them to do so, right? Because everybody's answer was both inevitably and correctly that he was so goddamn annoying they couldn't help it. It would not have been humanly possible not to attack the guy. Was that my strategy? No, no, not a strategy. I was trying not to punch him. <laughs> to, <laughs> right. <laughs> to punch him. Yeah. And just a couple other terrifying moments worth mentioning. At one point, everyone on stage got the question, will you support Donald Trump if he gets the nomination, even if he's convicted of crimes? And six of the eight candidates said yes. Only Chris Christie and some other old white guy who doesn't matter Sorry, said Asa. no. And yeah, Asa Hutchinson, or yeah. it doesn't fucking matter. No, and the entire crowd started booing at the two holdouts. Yep, <laughs> sure. Did. And honestly, if the debate was to be realistic, the question should have been like, "All right, so uh, would you support him if he fails to get the nomination, then lies and says he got the nomination, and then tries to start a <laughs> civil war rather than admitting he was a loser?" And then, too real, right? guys, too real. <laughs> Sorry, that was a rough question. Yeah. Okay. And then, like, four months later, when everyone's a grown-up and there's a congressional hearing about it, will you let the entire nation watch you run away from the terrorists like a little lad who loves berries <laughs> and creams? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about Holly, right? That's so fun. So good. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Okay. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Oh, all right. <laughs> One other detail. In terms of abortion... It was also pretty rough. The closest thing to any support whatsoever for uterine autonomy was Nikki Haley, and it wasn't, when she said, can't we all agree that we're not going to execute people for getting an abortion? And the answer to that question was no, they cannot all agree on that. <laughs> and following that comment from Haley, the crowd had a terrifying and also super awkward for them moment of everyone looking around at each other, all trying to do something that's halfway between clapping and not clapping. It was like literally a Zen koan of misogyny. And the crowd was like, ah. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, she might as well have winked as she said it even. She was very clearly saying, look, we all know that the abortion thing is how we get the Christians to vote against literally everything Jesus ever said, but actually doing things about it fucks up our whole thing. And they're like, I don't, I don't know if that's <laughs> Hey, y'all, we got lawsuits from pregnant prisoners saying their bellies violate the 14th Amendment. <laughs> We're not supposed to win this. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Little help here, guys. No, they're not. So that's the Republican Party of 2023, 2024, plus Donald Trump. Woo. So while you register to vote right fucking now, if you haven't already, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Well, that's because you're lazy. How can I be lazy if I'm so tired? You're just tired of being hey, lazy. Hey, buddy. Hey, Noah, Eli's got a haul of mirrors again. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, hey, guys. What's up? What's going on? Nothing. We just noticed you put up your haul of mirrors again. You usually do that when you're upset. I mean, you've got me there. I've been dealing with racing thoughts lately. It makes it tough to sleep, leaves me feeling blue, just generally a bad situation. So I... Set up a series of mirrors so you could argue directly with your personified id. Personified id, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Eli, these mirrors have got to be expensive. I mean, Noah, if you know a better way to deal with racing thoughts than arguing with your personified id in a mirror, I'm happy to hear it. Well, I mean, you could try therapy from BetterHelp. What's better help? Well, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Now that does sound good. Where do I sign up? Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, you ready to go? Yeah, yeah, um... Do you guys mind if I still... Do the you-need-me-I'm-part-of-you monologue? Exactly, yes, if you, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, buddy. Have fun. Have fun. I will. So can we watch or... Um... I prefer you not. It's the it's so big okay. moment. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. It's cool. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> And 
and we're back. Next up in headlines in X daughter news. Mm -hmm. Ever since Elon Musk took over Twitter, a small but vocal minority have been pointing out that it sure seems like he did it just to kill trans people. Now, I know that sounds crazy. Why would someone lose hundreds of millions of dollars and destroy even their most desperate fanboy's hopes of calling them a good businessman just to spite a tiny percentage of the population? Well, luckily for us this week, he just went ahead and told us why. It's because his trans daughter hates him and was corrupted by the woke mind virus to do so. The woke mind virus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that works, but Elon... She can just look at your recent business record. To, there's lots of ways to lose respect for right? you completely. Yeah. And, and also, to be clear, he bought Twitter because a judge made him after he talked a bunch of shit. The fact that his made up excuse is bigotry against his own daughter tells you even more than it would if that was his actual motive, right? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, um, quick reminder, uh, Musk has about 10 children with various different women around the world. Uh, a chill and stable thing to do for sure. And though he described his reaction to his daughter's transition as, quote, generally sanguine, not a great start, his daughter was obviously aware that fucking sanguine was a massive overstatement and asked family members not to tell him about her transition and when she actually did change her name said quote i no longer live with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way shape or form end quote well i bet she feels pretty silly because musk had several very sane and very chill things to say to his biographer in response blaming her education at a private school in california and saying quote she went beyond socialism to being a full communist and thinking that anyone rich is evil adding unless the woke mind virus which is fundamentally anti-science anti-merit and anti-human in general is stopped civilization will never become multiplanetary and oh, real quote <laughs> spacex would already be on mars but these communists keep blowing up your rockets Wait, what is that what excuses the woke was in your eyes when that <laughs> happened i don't understand <laughs> exactly yeah uh, so, yeah, since then, he has bought Twitter, removed anti-trans hate speech from their harassment policy, reinstated the accounts of a bunch of transphobes, threatened to make the word cis a banned slur on the platform, and has tweeted anti-trans dog whistles pretty much constantly. I guess what I'm saying is it all sounds pretty sanguine to me. Yeah, yeah, well, in the sense that he's out for blood anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moral of the story Stop giving people a billion dollars, okay? Nobody can handle having a billion dollars, and we haven't even tried giving a billion dollars to someone who isn't a piece of shit yet. Because when we give people a billion dollars, they have the multinational corporate equivalent of a boomer parent blocking their kid on Facebook because they put a rainbow filter on their profile picture. <laughs> yep. And in Super Tario Court news... Former Proud Boy leader Enrico Tario is going to be standing back and standing by for a long fucking time. Thanks to a 22-year prison sentence handed down by a federal judge on Tuesday. Uh, which means that now, out of the 1,100-plus people who have been arrested and charged in the January 6th riots, he got the longest sentence of anybody. And that wah, wah. is worth being a Proud Boy about. Ladies and gentlemen... We got him. Okay, Keith, why did I even buy a soundboard so much if you're going to cock block so much like, uh, You should have jumped in faster. Yes, Eli, why did you buy a soundboard? So, Boy, Tario yeah, yeah. was, of course, convicted back in May, and, <laughs> and we spent some party hats and noisemakers over that already, but last week, Trump-appointed U.S. District Court Judge Timothy Kelly brought the festivities to a rousing close with the harshest penalty for the insurrection to date. He justified the sentence by pointing out that, quote, Tario was the ultimate leader, the ultimate person who organized, who was motivated by revolutionary zeal, adding, quote, I don't have any indication that he is remorseful for the actual thing he was convicted of, end quote. Uh, and, and well, I think we can dispute just how ultimate his leadership was in the effort to make some other asshole the nation's leader. I don't think any of us are arguing against the merits of the sentence when we do so. Yeah. And 
buddy, you didn't even stop Joe Biden from getting the steal. That's oh, gotta hurt. That's yeah. so rough. And Hillary Clinton ate those babies and got away with it. It's a tough time to be an idiot who tried to overthrow our government. It really yeah. is. Yeah. So for his part, of course, Tario played the role of penitent sinner, apologizing to the police and the D.C. residents for his role in the insurrection and lamenting that he, quote, will have to live with the shame for the rest of my life, end quote. Um, which is probably not quite true. He's, he's only 39, looks to be in pretty good shape. Good behavior. He could stop living with that shame with a dozen years or so left. So Yeah, also, lots of ways to stop living with your shame. Thank Jesus you. Christ. Yeah, are you a proud boy or a brave boy, Enrique? Okay, huh? Move, moving on. So, now, it's it's worth emphasizing here, as we did when he was convicted, that Tario was not in D.C. on January 6th. Right. He'd been arrested for destroying a Black Lives Matter sign at a historically black church a month earlier and pretty much got banned from entering D.C. for any purposes but court appearances. So he was convicted solely for his role organizing, enabling and encouraging the rioters. And I just I feel like that's worth mulling over as we contemplate any future ultimate leaders of the January 6th riot who didn't actually break into the Capitol building or participate in the riot. Right? Sure. Yeah. We need to get Trump and Tario neighboring cells so they can bicker Fuck a little yeah, bit i just sure. want them mad at each other then move yeah. them back away from each other but then occasionally together yeah do you guys think trump drops hints that he's gonna squeal to his russian handlers so he doesn't have to die in prison right like he gets on the phone and real loudly is like oh boy am i feeling talky sure would be terrible if someone came and hung myself for me like they did for <laughs> jeffrey oh i would hate that <laughs> God, I hope so. Um, and also, I'm sorry to add this tangent, but I wanted to address a criticism that the right self-anointed intellectuals and Tario's attorneys are desperately selling at this point. And that's the idea that this sentence is unconstitutional because he's being punished for exercising his right to a trial. OK, so th this is uh, based on a plea deal prosecutors offered up front that was significantly lower than the ultimate sentence. According to his lawyers, Tario's lawyers, he was offered a sentence of nine to 11 years if he pled guilty. And now those lawyers and, and their unpaid propagandist apologists are whining about a trial tax. As in, like, he's been given an additional 11 to 13 years in prison as punishment for taking this to trial. And yes, Yes, that's you what that is. Yes, that is just that's how that's always fucking worked. You suddenly have an issue with it because it's being used against white supremacists instead of racial minorities. But that's just how plea deals work. Right. It is, in fact, the only way that they could theoretically work as far as I can figure out. This is a meritless and stupid argument, no matter how confidently Aunt Kathy invokes it. Um, and, and speaking of people who aren't long for this world, we need to take a quick break for a word from our other sponsor this week. Trust and will. <laughs> Okay, and this is an Intellivision 2. Like it's the sequel or it's also an Intellivision? No, that's what it's called. That's what it's called. Pay attention, dude. Hey, guys. What you doing? Oh, hey, Heath. Noah's telling me about all his old Nintendos so I can sell them when he's dead. And? And give the money to Lucinda, yeah. To, to Lucinda, exactly. I don't know, Noah. Trusting Eli's memory seems like a truly terrible way to plan your estate. Well, excuse me, Heath, if you've got some magical website where I can plan my estate for less than the thousands of dollars it would cost with a lawyer, then I'm all ears. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. With trust and will, you can protect your legacy from the comfort of your home, starting at just $159. Wait, wait, wait. $159? What's trust? And will. From maintaining control of your assets to easing the burden on your loved ones, an estate plan can ensure your family stays prepared and protected. Trust and Will has simplified the process of creating and managing your will or trust online, from finding out what's right for your family to finalizing documents with a notary. Each will or trust is crafted to be state-specific and customized to your specific needs. So no need for me to count on my loved ones to remember who I want to have what? Exactly. Trust and Will. Prepare and organize your documents all in one place for easy everyday reference or emergencies. Plus, Trust and Will secures your information with bank-level encryption. It's true. Trust and Will let us try it for free, and I made me and Anna's Trust and Will in just a couple of hours. Now we have notarized legal documents taking care of our kid and finances, and for thousands less than it would have cost to have an attorney do it. In fact, it was so easy, I immediately became a Trust and Will customer and helped my mom make her wishes official too. Gain peace of mind today with Trust and Will. 
Get 10% off plus free shipping of your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. All right, Eli. I guess you don't have to keep all of those notes on my video game collection after all. Yeah, good thing, because this right here is just a list of ways to trick Lucinda out of Noah's money, according to the title at the top. Seriously, Eli? Play the banjo? It's a rough draft. I think I it's I was just brainstorming. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Glitch McConnell news. <laughs> Glitch is a really nice way of saying shat himself again on live television. <laughs> That's right. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is currently on pace to shit himself on live television four more times this year. <laughs> After an incident last week that put him on a steady clip of two in the last two months. Or he's going to die first. It's fun for us either way. But according to Mitch, he's not going anywhere and he's going to finish his term. See, I don't know that that's an or situation. Either. If anybody can like shit himself four times and then die right away, it's Mitch McConnell, right? Yeah. <laughs> also, I just learned that I have the makings of a senior senator, so it's a good day is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. So during an event in Kentucky, Mitch was fielding a question about whether he'll be running for re-election in 2026. That's and he no. completely <laughs> froze mid-sentence. It was perfect. Then one of his aides walked over to him and shouted the question extra loud right in his ear. And Mitch was like, yeah, I fucking heard the question. I started to answer. You heard me start to answer. But then my body obviously stopped working and I fucking shot myself, you fucking idiot. Why are you yelling at me? It was that, but completely silent and motionless using nothing but his very sad, scared eyes. It so really again, super was. fun to watch. Yeah, I, I know there are a lot of theories on why this keeps happening, but I'd like to propose that there's a hard limit to how much harm a single human can do in a lifetime, right? And like these glitches are the laws of physics trying to compensate for Mitch's existence. That makes yeah. sense. The watchers are just sitting there in the void. Look, either he pauses or his arm hair cures cancer. This is a matter of <laughs> Newtonian energy transfer at this point. Like, I don't know what to tell you people. <laughs> so following the latest incident, McConnell's office released a statement that included a doctor's note giving Mitch a clean bill of health. Really? Yeah. Okay. T turns out he's also 6'3", 215, just like <laughs> Donald Trump <laughs> and Thor, the god of yes. thunder. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. In fairness to McConnell, though, public shitting and freezing up doesn't necessarily mean he's unfit to be a senator. And he had polio, which can have lingering effects on your body. All that being said, he had fucking polio because he's a thousand. Yeah. I mean, age alone shouldn't disqualify anyone, but maybe it should. I don't know. Either way, being evil should definitely sure, disqualify yes. you. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the ability to win a statewide race in Kentucky should probably disqualify a person from serving in yeah, the Senate. That'd be a great Yeah. Role. Yeah. Okay. Have we considered locking him and Diane Feinstein in a room in the hopes that she'll forget she's not a cat and eat him? <laughs> well, huh? I think now we've considered it. I'm All considering right. it. Stop right. that out there. And here's the latest from McConnell. During a press conference on Capitol Hill, McConnell said, quote, I'm going to finish my term as leader and I'm going to finish my Senate term. That Senate term, by the way, ends in January of 2027. So we're looking at approximately... 40 more televised shittings. <laughs> and that's, that's assuming the current pace, which feels like it's accelerating. Well, sure. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Lots to look forward to. Sorry, Eli, are you saying that if we lock Mitch McConnell in a room with cats, they will eat him? Because I have cats. Cats and eat rooms. dead bodies. Cat, they cats go, oh, when you right, die. Straight for the eyeballs. Yeah, cats eat you real okay. quick. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's actually a problem because sometimes people aren't like all the way dead and the cats are like, eh, what are you going to do? Oh, okay. My cats wouldn't eat me. They love me too much. I know exactly which of your cats would eat you. <laughs> yeah, so do guy. I, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and in Corpse Pose news, living in America, it can feel like we somehow ended up with the entire world supply of stupid yokels, which is why when stories like this next one come across our desk, we feel a certain amount of comfort, a modicum of warmth, a sousant of normalcy, if you will. Because this week... 
A resident of the small English coastal resort Chapel St. Leonard's reported a yoga class as a mass murder because he was walking by and he saw a room full of people lying down. Oh, God. He also saw a dozen cars parked outside, so he reported the 12-car pileup, too. Yeah. He also reports himself for attempted suicide, like, every night. It's a big hassle for the local cops. So, yeah, Millie... Susan, by the way. (laughs) So yeah, Millie Laws, who runs Unity Yoga, was teaching the class at the North Sea Observatory in the village, which also doubles as a community space, art gallery, and exercise studio. And she explained what happened in a later Facebook post. Quote, If anyone heard the mass of police sirens in Chapel St. Leonard's at 9.30 p.m. last night, then please be reassured. They were on their way to the observatory after someone had reported a mass killing in our building, having seen several people laying on the floor which actually turned out to be the yoga class in meditation. Dear general public, please be mindful that the observatory has lots of yoga classes happening in the evenings. We are not part of any mad cult or crazy clubs, end quote. I I feel like the odds that nobody at a yoga class is part of a mad cult are are pretty low, right? Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. So uh, next time your small town neighbor assures you that Hillary Clinton is eating babies in a non-existent basement or your uncle from Skokie tells you that the government done admitted there's aliens, comfort yourself that somewhere in Chapel St. Leonard's, there's a townie so stupid they saw a room full of people lying down and reported a mass murder without even bothering to check first. (laughs) (laughs) And finally tonight, in green later cheese news... The moon's south pole has been busy of late. After some 4.5 billion years and nothing but regular micrometeor strikes and occasional macrometeor strikes, it's seen a sudden surge in robotic tourism such that no fewer than three new lunar south pole stories have broken since the last time we recorded an episode of this show. We've seen one mission launch with the intent of a soft landing there, one soft landing there, and one hard crashing there, each by a different country. Okay, do these countries know that we already called it? Like for yeah. USA, we <laughs> call this. Yeah. Heath, Heath, it's been a rough couple of years. We're all just trying to manage with a robot what Stanley Kubrick faked with a Super Nintendo. Okay, okay right. we're just no, trying no, to. It still counts. Yep. <laughs> so we're going to start with the most recent, which is the launch of the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA's Lunar Lander, uh, which manages to simultaneously have both the best and worst name in the history of lunar missions. So the actual name, for, the English name for it is the Smart Lander for Investigating Moon, or SLIM, which somehow manages to be the worst acronym in the history of space exploration, despite the rather stiff competition. But perhaps... <laughs> if they land on the dark side of the moon, it would be Slim Shady. Yeah, it would. It would. Yes, uh-huh. there's, there's no dark side of the moon. <laughs> I, that was I'm booing because there's ever. no dark side of the moon. Um, but perhaps... Boing. We got it. <laughs> How dare you? But perhaps knowing that their acronym sucked, Japanese officials started referring to it unofficially as the Moon Sniper, which is so fucking awesome. I already bought tickets to its movie. Yeah. (laughs) And when you're a sniper on the moon, you got to know where your target will be in about five days. So it could also be a sequel to that Nick Cage vehicle next while we're at it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Very topical. Now, Japan is seeking to become the fifth (laughs) nation to land a probe on the moon. Obviously, the Soviet Union and the U.S. did it back in the 60s. Mm. Allegedly. They did, god damn it. Uh, China did it a decade ago, and India joined the club a couple of weeks ago when the Chandrayaan-3 mission successfully touched down on the lunar surface with the Vikram lander. And look, a- anybody can fucking crash into the moon, right? Like, fucking Luxembourg crashed into the moon. It takes some fucking skill to pull off a soft landing, and it takes even more skill to pull off a soft landing on the moon's south pole. Right? When you insert into lunar orbit, you're pretty much equatorial by necessity. That's just kind of the nature of orbit. So landing around the South Pole is basically as far from your starting point as you can get. Plus, it's hostile and craggy even compared to the rest of the moon. Okay, is it like a nicer neighborhood there? Why is everybody aiming at the really hard part? I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, Heath, I once saw you spend 45 minutes trying to flip a coaster from the side of a table onto the top of a beer glass. I feel like if anyone no, should yeah, get no, this. right, right. <laughs> Well, to, now, to, to, you did. Minutes. Now, to be clear, though, it's because that's where the water is. And if, if you want to exploit lunar resources, the South Pole is the place to start doing it. Um, and, but and just in case any observers were in danger of not recognizing what a monumental achievement that landing was, the Russians were happy to demonstrate how hard it is by preceding India's mission with an unsuccessful landing of their own. 
See, when I listed the Soviet Union among the four countries that had landed on the moon before, that wasn't just me reverting to the terminology we used back when my hair was in style. I, I didn't say Russia because Russia's never successfully landed on the moon. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, they haven't even tried, choosing instead to use their space program mostly for fucking sending billionaires up on tours and then failing to Titanic submersible them when they have the chance. <laughs> Okay, Prigozhin definitely got offered some free rocket rides yeah. before they were just like, okay, we're, we have to do a regular bomb. He's not taking rocket moon, rides. Dude? Huh? Um, yeah, so go for after, their, after their multi-decade lunar hiatus, Russia launched the Luna 25 mission in July of this year in a desperate effort to prove that they could, too, still do normal country stuff, even while they're hopelessly bogged down in a doomed campaign against Ukraine. Um, there, there's no word yet on what exactly caused the failure, but we do know there was an emergency situation on the orbiter a couple of days before the lander was jettisoned, which likely forced them to improvise the launch trajectory a bit. Uh, they have commissioned a panel to investigate the issue and figure out exactly what went wrong, and if they succeed, no doubt Putin will ask them to take a look at the Ukraine invasion next. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Stephen, FC, Dave Hawks, Amy Mason, James Dalmont, Hebe GB, Perry McDaniel, and Rebecca Cooper. You are the wearing clothes right out of the dryer of human beings, and we love you. Ooh. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Hey, they, they don't start paying us until we're actually playing the fucking ad, okay? That's I can say right, exactly. I want right yeah. here. <laughs> Wills are stupid. I like martyrs who don't survive. <laughs> Your family can figure it out. They're all chill, right? Honestly, that, that that right there could just be the ad. No, your family can figure it out. I'm sure they're all chill. Think about your family. Okay. Trustandwill.com. Trustandwill.com. <laughs> that one's a freebie, Trust and Will. You can have that one for free. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Don't you just love this time of year? Break out the cozy PJs next to a nice, hot fire. Tim's Maple Cinnamon Sugar Latte. I was going to say fireplace. And the pumpkin pick. Pumpkin Spice Iced Cap. Um, sure. There's nothing like the fall leaf. Tim Hortons Refreshers. Okay, I get it. Let's go to Tim's. Hot, cold, refreshing, sweet. Whatever you're in the mood for, Tim Hortons Fall Menu has it all.